What's up you freaking genius dads? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to solve square root equations, right? We're going to start with a couple easy problems and then we're going to get into some that are a lot harder, right? So here we have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to 13, right? So you always want to leave the square root for the very end. So the first thing we're going to do here is just uh, subtract 5 from both sides. These cancel out, so then we're just left with the square root of x is equal to 13 minus 5, which is equal to 8, right? Now in order to get rid of a square root, all you need to do is square it, okay? And then, again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other, right? So we have to square this whole side also, right? So then on this side, the square root and the squared exponent cancel each other out, so then we're just left with x is equal to 8 squared, which is 64. Okay, here we have 1 minus the square root of c is equal to negative 2, right? So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides. These cancel out, so then on this side, we're just left with the negative square root of c is equal to negative 2 times, or sorry, negative 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 3. All right, now to get rid of this negative symbol, all we need to do is divide this side by negative 1. And again, what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So then on this side, those cancel out. So then we're just left with the square root of c is equal to negative 3 divided by negative 1 is equal to positive 3, right? So again, we're just left with our square root, so that means we can just square it, and we'll square this side also. So then on this side, those cancel out again, so we're just left with c is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. All right, so then your answer here is c is equal to 9. Okay, so here we have 4 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 3 on the outside is equal to 19. So the first thing, the easy thing we do here is subtract this 3 from both sides. So those cancel out, so then we're just left with 4 times the square root of x plus 2 is equal to 16, all right? Now to get rid of this 4, I can divide uh, this whole side by 4 and this whole side by 4. So then those cancel out, and then we're just left with the square root of x plus 2 is equal to 16 divided by 4 is 4, okay? So again, we're just left with our square root. So again, we're going to square this whole thing and square this whole thing on this side. So then here, again, the square root and the squared exponent cancel out. So then we're just left with x plus 2 is equal to 4 squared, which is 16, All right? And then here, we'll just subtract each side by 2. So then we get x is equal to 4. 14. All right, so there's your answer. All right, here we have a square root on both sides, okay? So this is one of those problems you look at and you're like, oh, shit, talky mushrooms, what am I going to do? And it's actually easier than you think, right? So again, in order to get rid of a square root, you just have to square it. So we're just going to square both of these sides, okay? So then here, these uh, the square root and the exponent cancel out, and the same thing over here. So then on this side, all you're left with is 2x minus 1, and that's equal to x plus 4. Okay, so now we're just going to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other side. So let's move the variables to the left side. So this x, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Those cancel out. Uh, 2x minus x is equal to 1x, or just x. So we get x minus 1 is equal to positive 4. Here we'll just add 1 to both sides. So then we get x is equal to 5, right? So not too bad, right? So there's your answer right there. All right, here we have x is equal to the square root of x plus 6. So as you can see, we have a variable on both sides. And when that happens, that's often a hit you might have to factor, okay, might. And in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, I'm sorry. But I'm going to show you how to do it. So we have x is equal to the square root of x plus 6, right? So again, in order to get rid of a square root, all you have to do is square it. And what we do to one side, we do to the other, all right? So then here we get x squared is equal to, and then those cancel out, so then just x plus 6, right? So x squared is equal to x plus 6. So we're going to have to now move this x and this 6 to this side with the x squared so we can write it as a quadratic, okay? So we're going to subtract x and we're also going to subtract 6. And what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So we're going to subtract x and subtract 6. So then on this side, those cancel out. And then on the left side over here, we're left with x squared minus x minus 6, right? Minus x minus 6. And it's equal to, well, these two went away, so then we're just left with zero on this side, right? 
So we get x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so in order to factor this, well, first of all, we have an x squared, so we know we can break it up into an x and an x like that. And then uh, this very last number right here is a negative 6. So in order to figure out what numbers go right here, we need to figure out what two numbers multiply to negative 6, but also have a difference of this middle number right here, and there's basically a hidden coefficient, right? A 1, right? Negative 1x is the exact same thing as just negative x. So they have to have a difference of negative 1. So in this case, that'd be a negative 3 and a 2, right? Because negative 3 times 2 is equal to negative 6, and negative 3 plus 2 is equal to negative 1, right? That coefficient right there. So then we have a negative 3, or minus 3, and a positive 2 right there. And this is equal to 0. Okay, now to solve for your x values, all you need to do is set each of your parentheses equal to 0. So we have x minus 3 equal to 0, and x plus 2 is equal to 0, right? So we're going to have two solutions. So for this first one, we're going to add 3 to both sides. So we get x is equal to positive 3. And then for this bottom one, we'll subtract to 2 from both sides. So then we get x is equal to negative 2. Okay, now whenever you, well really for any of these problems, it's always important to check your solutions because some solutions might not actually work. Okay, so let's check our first solution right here, x is equal to 3. So let's plug in a 3 to this original equation right here. So we're going to plug in a 3 wherever there's an x, right? So uh, remember the original equation was x is equal to the square root of x plus 6. So then here we're going to have 3 is equal to the square root of 3 plus 6. Now we're going to have 3 is equal to the square root of 3 plus 6, which is 9, right? Uh, this is obviously a true statement, right? 3 is equal to the square root of 9. So that means 3 over here, x is equal to 3, is a solution, right? Now let's check our other solution, x is equal to negative 2. So we're going to plug in the negative 2, right? So we're going to have negative 2 is equal to the square root of negative 2 plus 6. So then we get negative 2 is equal to the square root of negative 2 plus 6 is equal to positive 4, right? So is this a true statement? Is negative 2 equal to the square root of 4? No, right? Because the square root of 4 is equal to positive 2, not negative 2, right? So that means negative 2 over here is not a solution, okay? And whenever you get a solution that doesn't actually work in the equation, that's called an extraneous solution which means it's not actually a solution. Okay, so for this problem, x is equal to 3 is a real solution, and x is equal to 2 is an extraneous solution. Okay, so this equation, the x is equal to the square root of x plus 6, really only has one solution, and it's x is equal to 3. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.